everyone, today we are going to learn about the physical examination of respiratory assessment. So before that, we would learn about the important anatomical landmarks for this assessment. First, we have the anterior thoracic cage, then the posterior thoracic cage. Next are the reference lines. We have the anterior vertical lines that has the right midclavicular line, midsternal line, and then lastly is the left midclavicular line. Next are the lateral vertical lines, the anterior axillary line, the mid axillary line, and the posterior mid axillary line. And then lastly, the posterior vertical lines, which has the left scapular line, the vertebral line, and the right scapular line. For the position of the lungs, we have the anterior view of the lung position, the posterior view, the lateral view of the left lung, and the lateral view of the right lung. Before we begin the procedure, make sure to gather all the necessary equipments. For this procedure, we would need examination gown and drape, a pair of clean gloves, stethoscope, light source, masks, skin marker, and metric ruler. So, good day everyone. So, for today, I will conduct a respiratory assessment. So, uh, first, we need to drape the patient and pay, uh, provide patient privacy, um, identify the patient using two identifiers, and especially explain the procedure to the patient to lessen the anxiety. For inspection, inspect for nasal flaring and for sleep breathing. You need exhale, sir. One, two, three. Observe color of face, lips, and chest. Inspect color and shape of nails. Posterior thorax. Inspect configuration while the client sits with arms at the sides. Stand behind the client and observe the position of scapulae and the shape and configuration of the chest wall. Observe use of accessory muscles. Watch as the client breaths and note use of muscles. Inspect the client positioning. Note that the client posture and ability to support weight while breathing comfortably. Palpation. Palpation for tenderness and sensation. Palpation may be performed with one or both hands. Use your fingers to palpate for tenderness, warmth, pain, or other sensation. Start toward the midline at the level of the left scapula over the apex of the left lung and move your hand left to right, comparing findings bilaterally. Palpate for crepitus. Crepitus also called subcutaneous emphysema. It is a crackling sensation like bones or hairs rubbing against each other that occurs when air passes through fluid or exudate. Use your fingers and follow the sequence when palpating. Palpate for primitus. Following the sequence described previously, use the ball or ulnar edge of the one hand to assess for primitus. So, vibration of air in the bronchial tubes transmitted to the chest wall. As you move your hand to each area, ask the client to say 99, assess all areas for symmetry and intensity of vibration. Assess chest expansion. Place your hand on the posterior chest wall with your thumbs at the level of T9 or T10 and pressing together a small skin fold. As the client takes a deep breath, um, observe the movement of your thumbs. For percussion, percuss for tone. Start at the apices of the scapulae and percuss across the tops of both shoulders. Then percuss the intercostal spaces across and down comparing sides. Percuss to the lateral aspect at the bases of the lungs comparing sides. Percuss for the pragmatic excursion. Ask the client to exhale forcefully and hold the breath beginning at the scapular line or the T7. So we need to percuss the intercostal spaces of the right posterior chest wall. Um, percuss downward until uh, the tone changes from resonance to dullness. Uh, mark this level and allow the client to breath. Uh, next, as the client tone heal deeply and hold it. Percuss the intercostal spaces from the mark downward until the resonance changes to dullness. Mark the level and allow the client to breath. Uh, measure the distance between the two marks. Perform this assessment technique 
on both hands of the posterior thorax. So for auscultation, auscultate for breath sound. So to best assess lung sound, you will need to hear the sound as directly as possible. Do not attempt to listen through clothing or a drape, which may produce additional sound or muffled lung sound that exists. To begin, place the diaphragm of the stethoscope firmly and um, directly on the posterior chest while at the apex of the lung at C7. So ask the client to breathe deeply through the mouth for each area of auscultation. So each placement of the stethoscope in the uh, auscultation sequence so that you can best hear inspiratory and expiratory sounds. Um, be alert to the client comfort and over times uh, for rest and normal breathing, it fatigue is becoming a problem. Auscultate for adventitious sounds. Adventitious sounds are sound added or superimposed over normal breath sound and heard during auscultation. Be careful to note the location on the chest wall where adventitious sounds are heard as well as the location of such sound within the respiratory cycle. Auscultate voice sounds. Burn company asks the client to repeat the phrase 99 while you auscultate the chest wall. Sir, can you say 99? 99. Again? 99. Again? 99. Okay. Ego asks the client to repeat the letter E while you listen over the chest wall. Sir, can you say letter E? E. Again? E. Again? E. Next. Next is whispered pectoriloquy. Ask the client to whisper the phrase one, two, three while you auscultate the chest. One, two, three. Again, uh, can you whisper one, two, three? One, two, three. Again? One, two, three. Again? One, two, three. Anterior thorax. So for inspection, inspect for shape and configuration. Have the client sit with arms at the sides. Stand in front of the client and assess shape and configuration. So inspect for position of the sternum, observe the sternum from an anterior and lateral viewpoint. Watch for external retraction, observe quality and pattern of respiration, note breathing characteristics as well as rate, rhythm, and depth. So ins um, inspect the intercostal spaces, ask the client to breathe normally and observe the inter intercostal spaces, observe uh, for use of accessory muscles. Uh, ask the client to breathe normally and observe for use of accessory muscles. So for palpation, we need to palpate for tenderness, sensation, and surface masses. Use your fingers to palpate your tenderness um, and sensation. Start with your hand position over the left clavicle, over the apex of the left lung, and move your hand left to right, comparing findings bilaterally. Move your hand systematically downward toward the midline at the level of the breast and outward at the base to include the lateral aspect of the lung. The established sequence and for palpating the interior thorax serves as a guide for positioning your hands. So we need to palpate for crepitus as you would on the posterior th thorax. Palpate for primitus using the sequences of, uh, for the anterior chest described previously. Um, palpate for primitus using the same technique as for the posterior thorax. So palpate for anterior chest expansion. Place your hands on the client anterior lateral, lateral wall with your thumbs along the costal margins and pointing toward the sepoid process. As the client takes a deep breath, observe the movement of your thumbs. For percussion, we need to percuss for tone, percuss the apices above the clavicles, then percuss the inter intercostal spaces across and down comparing sides. So per auscultation, auscultate for anterior breath sound, adventitious sound, and voice sound. Place the diaphragm of the stethoscope firmly and directly on the anterior chest wall. Auscultate from the apices of the lungs slightly above the clavicle to the bases of the lung at the sixth rib. Ask the client to breath deeply through the mouth in an effort to avoid transmission of sounds that may occur with nasal breathing. Be alert uh, to the client's comfort and offer times for rest and normal breathing if fatigue is becoming problem. Particularly for the older client, listen at each site at least one complete respiratory cycle.